Hi, this is Dr. Alan Mendelson from Eye Surgeons and Consultants in Hollywood, Florida. Today I'm going to talk about sexually transmitted diseases. You're probably going to wonder right off the bat, what in the world is he doing as an ophthalmologist talking about STDs or sexually transmitted diseases? And the reason is sexually transmitted diseases absolutely do affect the human eye. In fact, there are times when it's the ophthalmologist who's the first person to raise the alarm that there are sexually transmitted diseases present. Now, by far the most prevalent of all is herpes. That's gonna be the topic of a separate talk, herpes simplex one, two, and I'll talk about that in detail, but we're gonna pass on herpes simplex today. So I'd like to do is talk about three things in particular, and we'll start with chlamydia. Now, very briefly, just to mention for a second, of the neonatal conjunctivitis, it will surprise a lot of people that chlamydia actually is the most common cause of an infection in a newborn. Chlamydia is number one, and then if you drop down to number eight on the list, it's gonorrhea, unfortunately. So number one and eight are sexually transmitted diseases where a newborn gets their eyes red, swollen, inflamed, and big problems can quickly arise. Now, jumping to the more teenage adult patient population, by far the most common, again, we're gonna skip herpes for now, happens to be chlamydia. With chlamydia, there are hundreds of thousands of people in the United States who do have chlamydia with a high percent having ocular involvement. The eye will be red, it'll be swollen, there'll be a conjunctivitis with certain characteristic signs. Additionally, when we feel the lymph nodes in front of the ear, the lymph nodes are enlarged, frequently tender. Now, enlarged lymph nodes does not mean it's necessarily chlamydia, but it's one of the possibilities. In my practice, the most common time I'll see chlamydia is when a patient is coming for a second opinion or a third opinion or a fourth opinion and nothing seems to be working. They're on many different medications, lots of things are tried, and then by recommendation of their primary care physician, they'll come to see me. And then we'll do an examination and then there's some very characteristic signs that definitely point in that direction. Now, typically, as an ophthalmologist, we have a very detailed past medical history. All medical systemic problems, medications, allergies, and of course, we want a detailed ocular history. Now, if somebody comes in knowing that they have sexually transmitted diseases, well, they might feel a little bit cautious about it or a little uncertain divulging that information. It's actually important to let us know. Um, but we do not specifically go item by item as far as sexual history. Now, what happens with chlamydia though is, when I do the examination and I see something that points in that direction, I'll circle back and then in the medical history start asking a few pertinent questions. So I'll give you an example that's really kind of a case in point. Recently, I had a young woman in her early 40s um, it definitely looked like a chlamydial conjunctivitis. And then I said, listen, I have to ask just a few more questions. Are you sexually active? And almost immediately she said, no, and kind of gave me a frown. And then she said, well, why are you even asking me that? And then I brought up the subject. I said, well, based on your examination, one of the things that comes to mind is the possibility of chlamydia I think that's what's going on. In fact, I'm pretty sure, but the chlamydia can only occur if you're sexually active. And at that point, um, in the discussion, she said and elaborated and said, well, I've actually was divorced two years ago and um, I really just have not had an interest. And um, now nah, it just couldn't be that. And then um, I did looked again, clinical examination, and it definitely very much looked like chlamydia. And so I doubled back just one more time. And I said, listen, it's, if, if you're not sexually active, that's absolutely fine. 
but I don't want to put you on oral medication that will be terrific for chlamydia if there's no way that you have it. Um, there's testing we can do, but it just really very much looks that direction. And then sheepishly, she said, you know what? I have started to see someone. I am sexually active. I didn't bring it up. And in fact, I said no, because I didn't think it was anyone's business. So that interaction with that patient, it is actually a very commonplace occurrence for eye physicians that people might think that it's a little awkward that they'll discuss it with their OBs. They'll discuss it sometimes their primary care physicians, but they're wondering why other specialists broach the subject. Again, we don't do it routinely, but we'll double back. So in her case, um, it definitely was chlamydial-induced conjunctivitis. We put her on oral medication. She cleared very quickly. And of course, we did have the important discussion that it was very important for her partner to be treated as well. And that happened, and uh, the outcome was terrific. Now, of chlamydial conjunctivitis, it's probably a couple hundred thousand people in the United States each year that do become afflicted. So neonatal, it's number one. In adults, it's absolutely nowhere near number one. It's not in the top 10, but it's something that we have to be on the lookout for. So I'd say probably a few hundred thousand a year. Next topic is syphilis. Syphilis can be primary, there can be secondary, there could be tertiary syphilis. In any of those stages, there can be involvement in the human eye. Again, it's sexually transmitted. And the syphilis, it's called the great imitator. Great imitator being, it can cause a conjunctivitis. It can cause an inflammation of the cornea. Most commonly though, a lot of inflammation internal in the eye called uveitis or iritis, but also the back of the eye, a retinitis and there are various things. Now the issue with syphilis is very, very quickly, it can be extremely damaging to the eye. Um, I had a patient that I've taken care of where, again, he denied um, any kind of sexual history. Uh, it turned out once testing was positive and then circling back, uh, he did need to be on actually intravenous antibiotics because it was a secondary syphilis, um, but he cleared. It saved the eye and helped prevent neurologic and other things. The reason, again, I'm broaching the subject Ideally, if things are going on that you're aware of, please share it with your physicians, including your specialists. We need to know. Now, in both of those patients, they were totally unaware. The patient with chlamydia and the patient with syphilis, they were totally unaware that they had a sexually transmitted disease. And again, with the syphilis, it's important to broach the subject that partners must be treated. Much, much, much less common is gonorrhea. Gonorrhea, sometimes newborns, just in the process of a vaginal delivery. Uh, gonorrhea, and going back to chlamydia, that's how it happens with the newborns. It's with a vaginal delivery, um, with vaginal secretions. So gonorrhea can definitely affect the newborns. Now in adults, whenever there is a conjunctivitis that goes from a mild nothing to very, very rapidly, almost like a zero to 60 miles an hour, eyelids become extremely swollen, thick discharge, pus coming out of the eye. That's one of the things we must worry about. Why is it important? Because quickly it can get in the cornea, the clear dome over the eye, cause corneal ulceration, and God forbid, sometimes it can actually perforate, get into the eye and destroy a human eye. Um, the gonorrhea, again, it's sexually transmitted. It could be from direct or indirect contact. Um, one of the things interesting with gonorrhea as opposed to the others, there's definitely proven transmission that it can be from genital area to somebody's hand and from the hand then rubbing their eye and getting it in the eye. So I want us to be very careful. Again, uh, with antibiotics, makes a world of difference.